Hello, Shalom Aleichem. Welcome. Well, today we have some insights from insights into the Torah by Rabbi Zalman Zalman Saratkin on this um, on the parsha. A small. Let's take a look at some. Uh, this is Parshas Bamidbar, and the Parsha is Parshas Chukas. Chukas. That's talking about the red, the red heifer, the red cow. That uh, the ashes of the red cow. It, the the cow was slaughtered. It was perfectly red, and the it, it was slaughtered by Aaron Hakohen or one of his sons. And uh, then it was uh, burnt, and the ashes were, were mixed up with water and other ingredients. And, the, and then if somebody was tame, tame means ritually unpure, so they made, the coin would make a, an, uh, a uh, mixture of the, it would mix the ashes with water, with with, with pure water and mayim chayim that means it was running water not it was from a spring or a brook and uh, then he would sprinkle the ashes this mixture onto the person that was unpure impure tummy and after seven days I, he had to I, it was the third day I think it was the third day and then the There was a certain a couple of days that had that he had to go through this process, and then, then after that he would be once again tahor, and he would be able to he would be able to go into the mishkan again. It said, "By Adabar Hashem El Moshe V'Yallah Haron Lemor Lemor." Hashem spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, "This is the the." of the Torah which Hashem has commanded saying speak to the children of Israel and they shall take to you a completely red cow completely red cow which is without blemish and upon which a yoke has not come it was never it was never worked and a yoke never never was put on it you shall give it to Elazar the Kohen. Oh, this was given to Elazar the Kohen, the son of Aaron. He shall take it to the outside of the camp, and someone shall slaughter it in his presence. Somebody else can slaughter it in his presence, but he had to be there. Elazar the Kohen shall take some of its blood with his forefinger and sprinkle some of its blood toward the tent of meeting. A tent of meeting seven times. Someone shall burn the cow before his eyes. Its hide and its flesh and its blood with its dung shall be burnt. Burn. The Kohen shall take cedar wood, hyssop, and crimson thread, and, it, and he shall throw them into the burning of the cow. In other words, there are other, these other ingredients. Cedar wood, hyssop, and crimson thread. That's like a red thread. Then he should burn them into the burning of the cow. The Kohen shall immerse his clothing and immerse himself in water, and afterwards he may enter the camp. And the Kohen shall remain contaminated until evening. The, the Kohen that did this process, he becomes tome, he becomes contaminated. The Chibes... The chibes begadav he should wash his clothing. Hag kohen verachas besaro ba mayim, and then he should wash his his flesh in water. The yachar yavo el hamachana. Then he can then he can come back into the camp. Betame ha kohen ad oriv, and the kohen shall. Be tame impure, ritually impure until the evening. The hasarefos yechabes begadav, 
and the one that burns the the, the cow he should wash wash his clothing bamayim in water the rochatz besoro bamayim and he should wash his uh, flesh in water the tome adho orev and then he should be tome ritually impure until the evening a pure man then a different person a pure man shall gather the ash of the cow and place it outside the camp in a pure place for the assembly of israel it shall remain as a safekeeping for water of sprinkling it is for your it is for purification in other words the ashes of the red heifer should be gathered by a pure man somebody that is ritually tahor and then place it outside the camp in a pure place in a very very pure place tahor the assembly of israel it shall remain as a safekeeping it should be there all it should be as a safekeeping it was kept for them for the assembly of israel for water of sprinkling for the it is pure purification anyway so this is talking about the pora aduma the red heifer the red cow which is a chok which is something that we don't understand there's no way for us to understand this concept that in order to become pure one needs this red heifer the ashes of the red heifer this is something that Hashem commanded us and this is something that we we, we can accept we should accept that and uh, th- in other words it's, this is called a chok this is a commandment like from a king to to the subjects and the, the king does not give a reason the king doesn't give a reason for it of course there are reasons but uh, we don't understand the reason and uh, the, so we hope to understand the reason at one time so th- that is called a chok that is an example of a chok a chok means a a statute something and chok is like it's chokok it's, it's like something that is in stone in other words the the king hashem commands it and that's it he wrote it's written in stone and it has to be accepted a mishpat is something that uh we can understand in other words like not to steal to honor our father and our mother that is something we can understand not not to hurt people not to kill that is something we can understand a mishpat Let's see. He talks about the three types. There's Chok or Mishpat. He, Reb Zalman Saratskin, talks about the three types of mitzvos. The three types of commandments are, here, this is it. The three types of commandments are, one, the reasonable commandments. Those laws which men would have adjudicated had the Torah not taught them Re- regarding these the Torah says and do what is just in his eyes Ibid verse 26 then two the received commandments laws which no one would have thought of on his own received but once given they can be comprehended we, we, it, therefore it is our duty to contemplate understand and analyze them regarding these the Torah says give ear to his commandments and then the third type of commandments is the decrees those commandments whose explanation is not to be revealed to everyone regarding these the Torah says the Torah says and observe all his decrees if it's also Ravina Bechaya's commentary on the on the verse so in other words uh, so so we have here the three types of commandments the reasonable commandments the received so which are regarding these that, that that's the laws which man would have adjudicated had the torah not taught them then number two is the received commandments laws which no one would have thought of on his own but once given they can be comprehended 
Uh -huh. Therefore, it is our duty to contemplate, understand, and analyze them. And then the third one is the decrees. Those commandments whose explanation is not to be revealed to everyone. It's not to, everyone doesn't understand it. Regarding these, the Torah says, and observe all his decrees. It's like a decree. Anyway, there's another verse, another interesting pasuk here. Adam ki yomos ba'oel. If a person dies, God forbid, in the tent. So let's take a look at this. Zos hat zos. A Torah. This is the Torah. Adam ki yamos ba'ohel. If a person dies in a in the tent, kol habo el ha'ohel bechol asher ba'ohel yitmo shivas yomim. This is the teaching regarding a man who would die in a tent. Anyone that enters the tent and anything that is in the tent shall be contaminated for seven days. So anyway. Zosa Torah. So this is what Rav, Rav Zeratkin says about this, about Zosa Torah, and then Adam Kiyomos Ba'ohel. This is the teaching. The verse literally says, this is the Torah, hinting that by receiving the Torah, we become subject to this law of ritual contamination. A Jewish corpse contaminates those who are under one roof with it. The corpses of other nations who did not receive the Torah cannot contaminate in this manner. Manner, of Adam ki yamos ba'ohel, a man who would die in a tent. The Torah speaks in the terms of a tent, because in the wilderness the Jewish people lived in tents. The term tent is also used to teach that the tent itself, being movable, in other words, it's move. It, when one can take it apart and move it around, requires sprinkling with the water of the ashes of the red cow. In other words, the red cow, the ashes of the red cow will be able to purify it. In contrast to a house which does not require sprinkling because it is permanently attached to the ground, structures that are permanently attached to the ground are not susceptible to ritual contamination. This is very good also. This is the, the word the tent also suggests a life of poverty and humility. Since it says, Adam ki yomos ba'ohel, someone that dies in the tent. The word tent also suggests a life of poverty and humility. The Chazal expa expanded, expanded. The permanent continuity of Torah observance is maintained only by someone who kills himself over the Torah. In other words, uh, that's not literally, of course, that's figuratively. In other words, it's very, very, very important, extremely important to him. As it is said, in other words, it's like a matter of life and death. A man who would die in a tent. It's, it says a man who would die in a tent, Brachos 43, the Gemara Brachos 43. This refers to someone who devotes most of his energy to Torah and hence lives a frugal life of scanty subsistence. In other words, most of his time is devoted to the Torah and he doesn't devote that much time to acquiring things. It's like scant, a frugal life, very, very frugal, very... He doesn't spend that much money, scanty subsistence kills himself. In other words, he, it's, this is the main thing, the, the, his learning and the doing the mitzvos, mitzvos of the Torah. Such a person like our father Jacob is referred to as abiding in tents. He's ab it says uh, that our father Jacob abided, abided in the tents. Bereshis 25-27. The tents of Torah. He abided in the. He abided. He lived in the tents of Torah, and his material life is spent in a modest dwelling in a tent. In other words, the word it uses the word tent, ba'ohel, meaning a tent is like a very. It's not like a castle. It's not a very. Uh, 
imposing place to live. Uh, so it says if some somebody dies in the tent, the tent of learning Torah, the, the main thing is the Torah, and not the all of the other things the which people might run after. Okay, so this is a very nice. This is so. This is the book. This is the Sefer. Insights in the Torah by Midbar. The Chumash with the translation and the complete classic commentary on, of the Master Rav and Magid Rabbi Zalman Sor, Sorotkin. And this is Insights in the Torah by Midbar Chukas. Okay, thank you. Night, night, Kaltov, be well. Thank you.